I believe that the Orioles should be the, the favorite in the American League because of this trade. I really do. I love this move for them. Fly ball onto the track. At the wall. It's gone. Home run. Turns on a ball. Deep right field. And gone. What a game. What a moment. What is up, my friends? Welcome to Flippin' Bats, where, man, oh, man, we have so much to talk about this week, and we're going to talk about all of it. The Orioles making big moves in the front office, on the field as well. Uh, Dodgers Fan Fest happened this week with Mookie making some interesting comments that we'll dive into. Uh, the Royals locked up Bobby Witt Jr. for a long, long time to come. We'll talk all about that. Also... Top 50 players of the 2024 season. We have made it to the top five. Five through one is coming up during this show. And I do think you might be a little bit surprised who number one is. We got Name That Swing back. Uh, this one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Alex, one, everybody should make sure they're subscribed to Flippin' Bats wherever you can listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever. You can also watch on Spotify now. You can also watch on YouTube uh, at Flippin' Bats for everything on social media. So make sure you're all subscribed and following everywhere. Alex, it is it is raining a lot out here. <laughs> it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. I, I love that that's like all anybody can focus on when it's finally stormy here in LA. I love it. I'm I love raised it. raised here. It never happens. It's beautiful. I sat like with the door open with my dogs just staring at the rain for like hours last night. But I got to say something else big also happened this week, weekend, we had evidence of you working out for the very first time since we have done this show, going on a seven mile walk run in the rain? Well, Ben? Not exactly. This is very off not, brand for you. This uh, is very off brand. A lot of what she's saying right now is false. One, don't let her fool you. I have worked out a good <laughs> bit. I am back in the gym for what it's worth. So unnecessary shade. <laughs> Secondly, I believe what you're talking about is my Instagram story uh -huh. where you saw Lila yeah. on a run and yeah. it said seven mile run with Lila. Yeah. Well, that wasn't me. It was oh. Retta. That was Elizabeth's sister. Uh. And Elizabeth and I we're, we're walking. Oh, we, we, okay, that's we were on a walk. We were not doing the run. So, yes. But it was during I was the rain. I say, I'm like, I'm incredibly impressed. It was during the rain. Yeah. It was a rain, run, walk. Rain, mostly, run. Well, good job. Mostly walk. Thank Moody. you. Moody. It's fun. There's a yeah. lot going on around L.A. today. I mean, Dodgers were all over L.A. this weekend. We're going to yep. get to their fan fest in just a minute. But they were also in my hometown of Manhattan Beach doing the polar plunge for Chris Taylor's foundation. They were bowling for a Mookie Betts 50-50 yeah. foundation. They literally packed everything in. It was like an L.A. community event for the Dodgers this weekend. But let's start with their uh, the Fan Fest. Yeah. Or did we have video of them doing the Polar Plunge? I think we did. Did you see this? Have you done the Polar Plunge before? I, I haven't done it. I was Chris Taylor used to be a teammate of mine That's from Virginia. Say. I have not participated no? in the uh, Polar Plunge. Hell no. Okay. Fine. Yeah, here we go. Look, right at the Manhattan Beach Pier. I love this. This is something that like locals will do in wintertime, just to kind of, if you're not if you're not a surfer. I mean, if you're surfing, you're in the water every single day anyway. But it's just like a run in, get cold, come out. It's a good refresh, good way to start your day. No? Yeah. You're not into it? No, not not that. No. If you're listening, we're playing a video of everybody jumping into the ocean Ooh. at the Manhattan Beach Pier mm. for the polar plunge. This water is cold. The Pacific Ocean, way colder yeah. than the Atlantic. Crazy. Oh, come on. No, it is. You come, I know, but you come from the cold. It's not that bad. It's cold. Like I said, good way to start your day. Nice yeah. little refresh. But this was just one of the events they had this weekend. The big one was Fan Fest at Dodger Stadium with, I think, the biggest guest of honor was Shohei Otani being yeah. there, talking to the fans. And letting everybody know that his swing is almost at 100%. He should be ready for opening day in Korea. That's huge. Yeah, it was nice. It's nice to hear that. I think that I, I think everybody was just kind of hearing speculation, assuming Shohei would be ready for opening day in Korea. But yeah. it was nice to see him uh, there specifically saying, look, I'm basically swinging at 100% right now, and I should be ready for opening day. Uh, when they head over to Korea on March 20th, I believe. Yeah. So uh, definitely good to to hear from him, see him. And, yeah, the Fan Fest, there's uh, 
yeah, it was cool to see all the new faces there. Tyler Glass now was there with yeah. his luscious locks just flapping in the wind. It was, it was great. It's beautiful. I also, I don't know if you watched all of Shohei's uh, kind of interview interaction situation going on. He was showing personality. I, I, we're seeing kind of like a new side of Shohei yeah. Otani here in L.A. We're seeing him out and about. Obviously, we've seen him at events. He was at the Rams game showing up to Fan Fest. But they were asking him about Ipe, and they were like, oh, you know, like talking about their friendship and, and whatnot. But <laughs> he kind of like joked, and he's like, oh, he's not my friend. We just work together. <laughs> and just kind of like gave him some shade. But it That's was great. It was great. It, it, it was fun to see. But Otani wasn't the only headline at yeah. Fan Fest. We have uh, Mookie Betts making some, yeah, making we did. some great comments at Fan Fest, and we have the sound of that. So let's just, let's play that before we, we share our reactions to that. Every game is gonna be the other team's World Series. I mean, it is what it is. It's what we signed up for, you know? It's Every game yeah. is gonna be the other team's World Series. Alex, let me take this. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Uh -huh. But let me take this for okay. a second. I really, really like Mookie Betts. I love Mookie Betts. I like watching him play. I like the way he plays. This is a ridiculous statement. No, this not. is ridiculous. No, Let me tell you why. No. This isn't a football season where there's 17 games. This isn't any other sport. It's baseball, where there's 162 games. So you mean to tell me that the Colorado Rockies are going to come into town on July 28th, and it's going to be a Sunday day game at 1 o'clock. Actually, it's a kid's day, so let's 11, 11 o'clock start, 12 o'clock start. It's 95 degrees over at Chavez Ravine. And you mean to tell me that the Rockies are going to get up for that game because that's their World Series? Every game of the season that's played against the Dodgers? That's ridiculous. This is baseball. Half the games, you just, you just get it over with quicker. These games are too fast. Let it in. Not in the World Series. I just think it's a ridiculous thing to say on top of the fact that you had last year Dave Roberts guaranteeing a World Series. This is a team that can't get out of the first round of the playoffs. Why is every team gonna play a regular season game like it's their World Series? They're not. That's the crazy thing to say. You had a great off season. You have a great team. You're a World Series favorite. All of that can be true. But not every game of 162 is gonna be treated like a World Series game that's preposterous. No, okay. What I think Mookie was going for with this, first of all, he's just being aware of the situation, right? The Dodgers are officially the villains of Major League Baseball. They are the team that has a target on their back for every single team that is going to play them this season. And that is, I think, the base of what he's trying to say here. People are going to come in. Teams are going to come in. We're going to get their best every single time because they just have the craziest offseason we've seen in a really long time. They just paid Shohei Otani, the biggest contract in North American sports history. They just paid Yamamoto, the biggest pitching contract in Major League Baseball pitcher in history. And he hasn't even pitched a game yet here in the MLB. Plus, they beat the system by deferring majority of Shohei Otani's contract. So not only do they get the top players, teams are going to come in and they're going to be pissed. So yes, He's saying that they are going to get the very best effort from every team that's going to come in and face the Dodgers this season. Okay, yes, it's not going to feel like the World Series every time, but he's just being aware of the situation, that they're going to get the absolute 110% from every team they face this year because people want to take him down. I'm not mad. I love this. I love this. And I love that it pissed you off because uh, – I'm excited. I am hopeful that the Dodgers off. are going to get out of the first round this season. Yeah. I am just like, come on, please, it, we can do it. One, yes, it, we can. It doesn't piss me off. But two, maybe they need 162 World Series games because they haven't played in one in a long time. They can't get that, out of the first round, Alex. That was that was that was mean. They got to be able that to get out mean. of the first round. That was mean. Yeah, Look, I know. I have a couple questions from what you said. Okay. One, you said teams are going to come in and be pissed. Yes. What are they going to be pissed about? Well, who, who's going in to play the Dodgers and be like, we are so mad at you? Who's doing that? Why are they, they beat the system? What was the system? Uh, deferring majority of the biggest contract that's ever been signed in North American sports history. I think you're overestimating how much players care about that. Okay. Well, they were able to stack their roster because of that. I had another question, but I forgot it. Okay, cool. Good. I'll come back to it. Good. I, uh... 
I, yeah, I, I'm definitely, I don't, I'm not pissed at the comment. I, I love I'm, it. I'm not pissed at it. It's just that I think, I just thought it was like a ridiculous thing. And it's not. It is what it is. I love yeah. Mookie. You're, you're, of course, you, you have a good team. They have a good team every, Alex, they do this every year. Not this big of a contract, but every year you go in saying, oh my God. The Dodgers, not last season. the Dodgers are gonna win. The last, last year, season, I'll give you, it last, last year was the we one. We both went. What are they doing? They haven't done anything. They're clearing their books and they clear their books for this offseason. Correct. To last get year Otani was the first one. Make the moves but that the they years prior, every year, so this is unbelievable. How, are they gonna lose a game? You got, you got Scherzer, you got Trey Turner, you have a full year of this, and like every year, I feel like they're super talented. Yeah. And spend a lot of money. This year, I will give you, is different. They spent a lot. They spent over a billion dollars, but. <laughs> Every year they do this. I, I just I, look. Not like this. Not like all this. I would all I would say is if this they're is coming different. if they're coming off of a World Series victory, yeah. a World Series championship, or if they won a World Series in two of the last three years, I think that comment holds a little more substance, has some more substance to it. I think when you've gone two years in a row and you've won one playoff game and get swept by the D-backs in the first round, and you lose to the, the Padres the year before in the first round, I don't think you can go around saying this. I don't think this is teams are thinking this is the World Series. I think teams are thinking, man, I hope we play the Dodgers in the first round because it's they're gonna, that's when they lose. I just wouldn't have said that. I think you're overreacting to the comment. I probably, yeah, of course you're, you're I definitely am. Overreacting but it's, to the a, comment. it's a bold it's statement. Yeah. It's a bold statement. It is. Well, uh, let's talk about a team who made a bold move. Because the Orioles finally, finally made their big move and got their ace, trading for Corbin Burns. This is huge and exactly what they needed to do. Yeah, this is awesome. I, I'm so happy for Orioles fans for, for this move. For, I'm happy for the players. I'm happy for the team. I'm happy for the, the fan base for this move specifically. But for the, the ownership, which we'll talk about in a second, here's the trade right mm -hmm. here. The Orioles receive Corbin Burns, and the Brewers are receiving D.L. Hall, a left-handed pitcher, Joey Ortiz, uh, a shortstop who is a is a he's good, and the number 34 pick overall in the draft and the competitive balance, Worth uh, it. their competitive balance pick. So their number six and number seven prospect yeah. for the Orioles are on the move um, to the Brewers. So look, this is about the Orioles getting Corbin Burns, in in my opinion. Um, I, I think this was a move that needed to be made. I have been begging the Orioles to make this move for a year and a half at yep. this point. But what I will say is anybody that knows Mike Elias, the GM of the Orioles, mm -hmm. should not be surprised by this move. This is what he does. Corbin Burns specifically, that's, that's, that's great. But you had to know he was going to acquire an ace, and that he did. It just felt like this was the one move that the Orioles needed to make, and that's why I've been so frustrated for a year because I'm like, this team is so good and so young and so ready to be something, but you can't win in the playoffs without a true bona fide ace, or, and, and at minimum, you need two studs. Three is the, the recipe to win in the playoffs, and now you did, and now I think the Orioles are in a place where every single team in the league should now be worried. The Orioles are now, in my opinion, the team to beat in the American League. They have their ace. They have Bradish as a number two. They have Grayson Rodriguez, who's a stud. I really like what they did. Mike Elias should not have surprised anybody with this move. And what I mean by that, Alex, is in 2012, Mike Elias joined the Houston Astros. Yeah. They were in the midst of three straight 100 loss seasons when that happened. Okay? Okay. They ended up drafting, developing over the next few years, and then we have seen what the Astros become. The Orioles, from 2018 to 2021, three full seasons, 100 straight losses in all of those full seasons. It's the same recipe. Mike Elias joins the Orioles in 2018. He joins. He knows the blueprint for success because he just built that team in Houston that has dominated and have had one of the most dominant decades for a baseball team that we have seen. And now he goes to Baltimore, takes over a team that, again, is in the midst of 100 lost seasons. And again, what's the recipe? Draft, develop, and get players to the big leagues. Alex Bregman, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, Kyle Tucker on the Astros side, Adley Rutschman, Gunnar Henderson, um, Kerstad, 
Colton Kowser, Grayson Rodriguez on the Orioles. The names go on. It's identical. But then what happened with the Houston Astros? Those guys get called up. They looked like they were good. He held course until it looked like it was really time. And then in 2017, he made a trade for Justin Verlander. And that's what this is with Corbin Burns. This is that move. This is the move saying the team is now ready. I know everybody thought they were ready before. They have that playoff experience now. The team is going to be really good. Now we're ready to have that ace come in and take over this team. And I believe that the Orioles should be the, the favorite in the American League because of this trade. I really do. I love this move for them. I love this move and what it signifies for the organization. They're going to be so good for so long. Now the, the organization just needs to hold on to their young stars. And I think we're about to talk about it. But with this new ownership, now you feel better about it. Because last year, what did we hear in the middle of that great season? Ownership saying, well, let's, God, we can't afford to keep all these guys around. Now yeah. they have new ownership that's going to come in, hold on to these young stars, have the pitching to go with it, and you can dominate just as well as the Astros had for a decade or longer with this core that they have. I mean, we know that the Orioles can be great. They won the AL East last season. Yeah. I think took everybody by storm with how fast they got to that point. Because mm -hmm. what you called World Series in like within five years, I think you made that claim at the beginning of last season. But now, okay, with the addition of their new ace, Corbin Burns, <clears throat> would you say the O's are a top five rotation in the American League? Um, top five in the American League. I I'll do you one better. Okay. I would say, I would say the Baltimore Orioles. I would say the Baltimore Orioles are a top five pitching rotation in the American League, and I would say they absolutely have the potential to be a top five rotation in all of baseball. Potential. And yeah, I wouldn't. I would right now say top five in the American League. Okay. And I would say if I, I won't even. I won't even say potential. I would say right now, from from what I see, one through five. Where do you rank them? I, I would say right now, okay. potential to be higher. I would say right now they're a top five rotation in the game of baseball. I, I would. You have, and, and I think it's underrated. I think the other teams, Ooh. I think the other teams that you have in here, I think have those big, those big names that everybody's Experience, aware of. Experience, which knows. is why they're big you have, names. You have the Braves. Yeah. So I would have the Braves as probably the number one rotation in baseball. Okay. Strider, Freed, the addition of Chris Sale I really like. Yeah. Um, I'd go Mariners. Okay. Luis Castillo, uh, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, Bryce Miller, um, Brian Wu. I would I would put them in there. Okay. Um, I really like the Dodgers. Yeah. Yamamoto, Bueller, hopefully healthy and has a good season. Okay. Last now, I think they're in that top five conversation. Um, I think the I think the Astros, Justin Framber, Hunter Brown, Christian Javier, uh, Urquidy is a good a good five. And I would go, I would go Orioles. I would go Orioles at five. Yeah. What Gordon if, Burns, Kyle Bradish, Grayson Rodriguez, Means is back as like a four. I know he's a question mark. Dean Kramer is a five. I would go Orioles at five. What about Yankees, Blue Jays? Well, Rangers, let's talk Rangers. Let's, let's talk Yankees. D-backs. I'll answer all these. Yankees? Yeah. Garrett Cole, Corbin yeah. Burns, I mean, maybe a slight, slight, slight tick to Garrett Cole. I think Garrett Cole right now is the best pitcher in baseball, okay? Carlos Rodon or, or Kyle Bradish? Yeah. Look, people are underrating Kyle Bradish here. Kyle Bradish last year, in the final 16 starts of the year, had a 2-4-2 ERA. He was one of the best pitchers in baseball last year. Stuff-wise, he was fantastic all year long. And ERA-wise, all year long, under a three. He was great. So... If you're asking me right now, yeah. do I want Kyle Bradish or, or Carlos Rodon? I mean, if you could guarantee me that both are going to stay 100% healthy all year long, then I think it's close. But unfortunately, that's not a guarantee in this baseball world and in the sports world. And, and I'll take Kyle Bradish with the injury concerns that are there with Carlos Rodon. After that, give me Grayson Rodriguez over Marcus Stroman. Grayson Rodriguez last year in his final 16 starts of the year. A 2-2-6 ERA. And then you have Means and Means and, and Kramer as a as the as the last two guys in the rotation with plenty of depth. So I'll take them over the Yankees. 
Blue Jays, Gosman and Corbin Burns, give me a toss up there. Okay. Barrios or, or Bradish, give me Bradish. Chris Bassett or, or um, Grayson Rodriguez, give me Grayson Rodriguez. What the hell are you going to get this year from Alec Manoa? I, I don't no know. No idea. So that uncertainty scares me. Okay. Um, the, the Rangers, good Lord, DeGrom's not going to pitch for a lot of the year. Scherzer, there's always, I feel like, question marks at this point. Montgomery's not there right now. Where's he going to sign? Uh, yeah, uh, still a good rotation. But yes, give me the Baltimore Orioles. Look at this. According to Fangrass, and this is an advanced metric, but according okay. to Fangrass, the top three starting pitchers last year with the highest stuff plus in the second half of the year. Okay, I'll give you the top three in all of baseball. So this is basically an advanced metric for how good their stuff is. Number one, Corbin Burns. Number two, Kyle Bradish. Number three, Grayson Rodriguez. They're all Baltimore Orioles right now. Give me the Orioles as a top five rotation in all of baseball right now. Okay. With the potential to be a top three rotation in all of baseball if you can get uh, second half Grayson Rodriguez and a, more progression in his career from, from Grayson Rodriguez, I, I, I think they could be a top three rotation. I, I really love it. And I, th I think it's the most underrated rotation in baseball. I hope this ages well for you halfway through the season. I hope you so, too. A, you had a lot of great takes before last season started. I hope this is another one of your good ones. I this wanna... is a young, exciting team with, as we mentioned, making more big moves for the franchise because the Baltimore Orioles – sell for $1.725 billion. Now, the sale is pending a vote from all the Major League Baseball owners, and the new Orioles group will own 40% of the team until Peter Angelos passes away. So it's like, there's a lot of things pending, but there is positivity on the horizon for this ownership group. Yeah, the the vote is basically that's merely uh, yeah. just a semantics at that point. The the vote will will pass. There will be new ownership, and there is a lot going on there. But essentially, this is such good news for yeah. Orioles fans. Everything that we just talked about, the rotation, the young players, you just feel like all of that is in much better hands. Yeah, and and in and in hands that are willing to spend and and make the team good. I just, I, I really like when ownership or ownership groups take over a team that love baseball yeah. and that want the team to be good. And you can't say that for every team around the league. So when, a, when an ownership group does take over that clearly wants to win, like this one, that by the way, involves Cal Ripken Jr. and Grant Hill yeah. are, are in on this ownership group, they wanna win. They want to spend. So now this young core of guys that mm -hmm. I've talked a lot about, Adley, Gunnar Henderson, Jackson Holiday, who's a name that I didn't even mention earlier when I was talking about the young core of this team. Jackson yeah. Holiday might be the best of all of them. Jackson Holiday, Grayson Rodriguez, Colton Kowser. These are guys that the question was, if you were an Orioles fan, is does the Angelos family want to pay these guys to keep them around. And yeah. we were starting to get enough context clues to know that that answer was no. They yeah. weren't gonna spend to keep that core together because they said well, they're too expensive to keep together. <laughs> well, I think this ownership group sees the value in it. I think within, I, I think we might have a new, we're seeing all these, to, to younger players, we're seeing all yeah. these decade plus long deals for a lot of money. I think before opening day, we could see one of those for Adley Rutschman. And I, I hope mean, we that, do. That would be huge, considering the Orioles haven't signed a player to a multi-year guaranteed deal since 2018. They've had a losing season, losing record, 17 of the 30 years that the Angelos family have owned the team, and they've only made the playoffs six times. Like, there is a reason fans have rejoiced, like, with this news that the team is selling. And as you mentioned, with this new ownership group, like, hopefully we see more trades like Burns, but extensions. Yep. Do you think we'll get one of those before the start of the season? I do. For I, like an Adley or a guy. I think Adley. I, I, I think it'd be awesome. Look, the timing, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes when a new ownership takes over, yeah. right? So I don't exactly know how the timing's going to work out, how much they'll be able to have their finger on the pulse with exactly what they want to do. Look, opening day is a month and a half away, right? Ooh. Like, so... Exciting. I, I don't know. Will they be able to get a deal done for, for Adley Rutschman that quickly? I, I don't know. It, it totally depends. But I think it would be awesome. Yeah. Awesome for this ownership group to come in and make a statement. Get sign Adley Rutschman, yeah. 
Jackson Holiday, you guys are Orioles for life. And hey, Gunnar Henderson, we're going to work on your deal. Grayson Rodriguez, we're going to figure this out. We have our core. Yeah. We have our guys. We're going to spend to keep you here long term. Look what the – you can't say that the teams – you can't say they can't afford it because what teams are doing is – we're just seeing more teams do the Braves way, yeah. right? It's just over a long period of time, a decade plus, so it's a lot of money, but – it's a, it, you know, I think in the end it could end up being very valuable for the Orioles to have a guy like Adley Rutschman wrapped up for uh, 10 years making, I don't know, 20 something, $30 million a year. I think that could be extremely valuable, and I think they could absolutely do it with that young core. Orioles fans should be ecstatic. This is one of the best weeks. Mm -hmm. If you're an Orioles fan, this is one of the best weeks you've ever had when it comes to your, your fandom 30 years. for the Orioles. I yeah. mean, it's it's awesome. It's huge. So good for them. I'm ex I'm extremely happy. I've been I've been happy for the Orioles for a while now. Just yeah. I, I could see the writing on the wall. I wanted them to get a pitcher. I want to sit in the bird bath so bad out there in the outfield. <laughs> it keep is coming back. Keep, keep if anybody was worried, don't be. The bird bath is back for the 2024 season. I did my due diligence. I will make it happen this year. <laughs> so Orioles fans, good on you guys. Well, speaking of extensions, and another team that's been making big moves this offseason, Kansas City signed Bobby Witt Jr. to a $288.7 million extension. Like you were just talking about, teams are literally wrapping up their young players and making them a part of their franchise for life. It's so good. This is it great. Is so good for the game of baseball. Well, let's start with who it's best for. Okay. Bobby Witt Jr. Yeah. The man is getting paid. He's only 23 years old. This is an Good 11 for him. year deal extension. So he's still going to be in his prime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So th this is, it's so good for the game of baseball. We'll get to that in a, in a second. But yeah. it's good for him. It's good for the Royals. Like you said, he's 23 years old. So the deal is very big. Uh -huh. Very big deal. $288.7 million. But there are opt-outs. There are the, the opt-outs can get confusing at the end. I'll help explain them to you. Okay. There's a player option okay. after years seven, eight, nine, and ten. Player option. Bobby Witt Jr. has an option there. Okay. There is a team option after year eleven for three years, eighty-nine million dollars. Oh. So if all options are exercised, it would total fourteen years. $377.7 million, which would be the third largest contract in MLB history behind Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. Wow. Yeah. So what does this mean for the Royals' future? Because we've seen them make so many necessary and big moves this offseason. We've talked about them quite a bit this offseason. But now having this, like really having your franchise guy locked in for over a decade, what does this mean for their future? I think I think this offseason means a lot to, to Royals fans. Yeah. And I think the question, you know, there there could have been the question of, well, how committed to winning are they? And in a year where I think everybody could look at the roster and say, okay, well, the Royals aren't going to win the World Series this coming year. They went out and put together a competitive team, mm -hmm. a team that is capable of competing in the AL Central and, and winning that division. And if you look outside of just this year, if you look at the Orioles roster, the, the Royals roster, you could look at it and say, there is one guy on that roster that we know is a superstar and we want him here for a long, long time to come. And they made that happen. Mm -hmm. So as a fan, even though your team stinks right now, yeah. you have a you have a vision and you have you see the guy that's probably everybody's favorite player, at least their top three. Favorite player on their team is Bobby Witt Jr. And he's 23 years old, and you go out and absolutely pay him. Potentially $377 million. So if you're a Royals fan, you see the commitment to winning in just the short term. Mm -hmm. You see the commitment to winning in the long term. You see the commitment to the fan experience with the stadium and everything that they've announced. I, they, should, they should be very happy and pleased with the direction that this ownership and, and front office has gone. Uh, I'm very pleased with with this deal for for Bobby Witt Jr. I love when a team recognizes greatness and goes out and pays their guy to be on their team 
in their city for a long, long time to come. And that's what they did here with this deal for Bobby Witt Jr. Guys, if, if you don't know, if you don't watch a ton of Royals baseball, and if you don't know a ton about Bobby Witt Jr., this guy has an MVP in his future. Yeah. I mean, he does it all. Hits for power, hits for average, is faster than lightning. That's a saying that I don't quite get. What does that even mean? Nobody's faster than lightning. He's faster than lightning. Plays great defense. The guy, the guy does it all. And I'm really glad they paid him. I think he wins an MVP in his future. And uh, I'm glad for the Royals in the city of Kansas City that he's staying put uh, for over a decade. Yeah, big congrats to Royals fans, especially our coworkers and friends, Fran and Bartlett. Oh, yeah. This is big. They came in with huge smiles today. So you can just tell KC is going to be, they're going to be lit up. Yeah. They're going to be lit up this season. You know, and they should. One thing I, I keep saying I'm excited for the game of baseball, I feel like one really cool thing that's happening in the sport, and maybe there's a lot of credit here due to what the Braves did years ago with Acuna and Albies, and yeah. everybody talks about those deals. Well, it started this trend in baseball of teams really paying their young superstars. Mm -hmm. So Bobby Witt Jr. now has the third biggest extension in the history of baseball that's behind great. Fernando Tatis Jr., Julio Rodriguez, and now Bobby Witt Jr. So... This tweet here from Danny Vietti. Bobby Witt Jr. will be in Kansas City for the next decade. Julio will be in Seattle for the next decade. Tatis will be in San Diego for the next decade. Corbin Carroll will be in Arizona for the next decade. Do you get the theme I'm going mm -hmm. with here for the game of baseball? Teams latch on to their superstars, and they become fans. They idolize these players, and the game desperately needs these players to stay yeah. put for a long time. So outside of just these young guys signing these, these long extensions and you know where they're going to be for the next decade plus, you also still have guys like Acuna, a superstar, the reigning MVP. You know where he's going to be. Aaron Judge, the biggest superstar in the game. You know where he's going to be. He's going to be in New York. Shohei Otani, he's going to be in L.A. So you have these contracts now which have become more and more popular which I really think are great for the sport because you have your superstars staying in the city that is paying them and believes in them. And I just think I, I'm really excited about it. And all those names mentioned, Corbin Carroll did the same deal. Tatis, J-Rob, Bobby Witt now. Mm -hmm. It's so good for the sport. It's good for the cities. It's good for fan bases. And super happy for Bobby Witt Jr. And super happy for the game. Let's keep talking about superstars because uh, Bobby Wood Jr. was in your top 50 players of 2024. And we are in our final Ooh. day, our final show, doing our top five players of 2024. Now, all of these guys are coming off MVP caliber seasons and recently either won or were nominated for an MVP. So let's get this rolling and start with number five a two-time World Series champ, an MVP, a seven-time All-Star, a six-time Silver Slugger, and Gold Glove winner. This man can do it all for the Dodgers, Mookie Betts. Yeah, Mookie uh, is going to have a big 2024 because it's what Mookie Betts does, does. Last year, he hit 307. He drove in 107 runs. He hit 39 homers. This year, he's going to be the second baseman for, for the Dodgers but can play a gold glove right field, can play a gold glove second base, mm -hmm. can play anywhere you want on the field. Came in second in the NL MVP voting last year. Yep. Another big season coming up for 2024. Mookie Betts comes in at number five. Again, as Alex mentioned, this is top 50 for next year. Mookie comes in at number five for me. All right, and moving to number four. He's also an MVP. He's one of the greatest hitters in the game right now. He is the heart and soul of the Yankees, the captain, Aaron Judge. Yeah, look no further than last year. Like, the whole season got derailed for the Yankees yeah. when Aaron Judge ran into the wall in right field at Dodger Stadium. We're going to get a healthy Aaron Judge for 2024. I'm putting it out there in the world for all these players. We're going to get a full, healthy season for 2024. He's going to hit over 267. Look, this is all limited time last year. He had 267 with 37 home runs in 106 games last year. So missed a large, mm -hmm. large chunk of time, about two months. And uh, I, I'm hopefully plays a full year this year. And I think we get closer to the numbers that we saw when he won his yeah. MVP award um, the year prior. So uh, Aaron Judge comes in at number four for me. At number three, he's a two-time World Series champ and a two-time 
World Series MVP and helped the Rangers to their first title in franchise history, Corey Seager. Oh, man. Am I excited for a full season of Corey Seager? Uh, if we, his numbers from last year are video game numbers. Yep. He unfortunately was out a large chunk of the year as well. Played 119 games last year, but in 119 games, listen to these numbers. 327 with 33 homers, 96 RBIs, an OPS over 1,000, and 42 doubles. Oh, and a World Series champion. Still led the league in doubles. Yeah. Led the league in doubles mm -hmm. while playing 119 games. Corey Seager, please give me 150-plus games this year and watch what those numbers turn into. I think he's one of the best hitters in the game of baseball. I think he's the best shortstop in the game of baseball right now, and I'm excited to see this season. All right, moving on to number two, and I think a lot of people are going to be shocked that you have this man at number two. He is a two-time unanimous MVP, the greatest player we have ever seen in this game, in our time, the unicorn, Shohei Otani at number two. That's right. Shohei comes in at number two for the 2024 season last year. We was on pace. He was on pace to have the, the greatest season that we have ever seen, topping his other greatest season that we have ever seen. He had 304 last year with 44 home runs, 95 RBIs. He stole 20 bases. He had a season-long OPS over 1,000, led the league in on-base, OPS, slugging, winning an MVP. We all know the accolades from last year, and all those offensive numbers – are again with missing some time. He hits over 50 home runs last year, somewhere between 50 and 60 home runs last year, if he stays healthy. I'm hopeful that we see him hitting all year long and we can see numbers like this. I hope he hits 300 again. I hope he hits 60 homers in his first year in Los Angeles. I hope he drives in 120 runs because he's going to have a lot more opportunity to drive in runs than he did with the Angels. I hope he steals 30 bases. I hope he has an OPS over 1,000. He could put up an absolutely insane year here in 2024, and he comes in at number two. And when we get to number one, uh -huh. I'm going to explain all of it. But, Alex, before we do that, okay. let me explain who number one on my list of the top 50 countdown. We have been counting it down for months. Five players a week. Sometimes I would get aggravated because it seems like it's dragging on too long, but I'm not <laughs> aggravated anymore because it's led to this dramatic reveal. All the way up to my number one player for the 2024 season. He's coming off of a unanimous NL MVP award last year for the Atlanta Braves. He is Ronald Acuna Jr. The one and only man in the history of the sport that has gone 40 70 yeah. in a baseball season, 41 homers last year, 73 stolen bases, an OPS over 1,000, a batting average of 337, 35 doubles on the year. I'm wearing his shirt now. Close your eyes if you hate fun. He's a guy that has more fun than anybody out there on the baseball field. He aggravates pitchers. He aggravates the other team. He has fun, led the, team, led the league in stolen bases, OPS, on base, everything runs, hits, Ronald Acuna Jr. could very well run back, back-to-back -back NL MVP awards this year. I think he is absolutely deserving of the number one spot on the top 50 players for the 2024 season, Ronald Acuna Jr. What does he do as an encore for a 40-70 season? I have no earthly idea. But I think he gives it a run for his bases. money. 50 80 yeah, for Ronald Acuna Jr. Now that in he's got the hang of it. 2024. So that wraps up my top 50 players. This week was top five Mookie yeah. Betts, Aaron Judge, Corey Seeger, Shohei Otani, Ronald Acuna Jr. Good work. Thank you. I agree. Now, yep. let me clarify. Okay. Because I think people are going to be surprised. I think. You might not be surprised, I'm but your surprise is not. Know why. Your surprise is not my number one. I know why, but look, explain it, it. This is simple, guys. Shohei's not pitching in yeah. 2024. What makes Shohei Otani Shohei Otani? It's that he's a two-way player, and he's an all-star at two different positions. He's an all-star designated hitter. He's an all-star pitcher. 
Unfortunately, due to his injury, he will only be hitting next year. And I still think he's a top two player in the yeah. game of baseball next year. I think he's going to hit 50 home runs. I think he can absolutely drive in close to 120 runs next year. I think he can hit 300. I think he could steal 30 plus bases. Honestly, we're going to see Shohei run more next year because he's not pitching. Yeah. So we're going to see him be a little more aggressive on the bases. Shohei might steal 40 bags next year. He might be. He might go 40. Yeah, you forget how next fast year. he is. Yeah. Like he, like that's probably the last thing we talk about when we talk about Shohei Otani. We talk about his pitching. We talk about his hitting, but his speed around the base path is so impressive. And now that that's his main focus, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be up there with top stolen bases. Yep. So yeah, it's it's simple. Why is it two and not number one? He will not be pitching next year. He will be a fantastic designated hitter, and I'm excited to watch his 2024 season. He comes in at number two on my list of the top 50. That was fun. Let's have some more fun, because it's game time now. Whew. It's time for Name That Swing. Now, we started this new game last week. As you hear the music, here it is. Ben's going to have 30 seconds to name the swing of a player. We're going to show his silhouette, which is actually a pretty good, like, it, it's a great silhouette. And this has given you a way better chance than I thought it was going to. Whoa, before. whoa, whoa. Don't we discredit played. my work. I'm not. So he went three for three. Ben went three for three last week. So I'm curious how good you're going to do I'm this. I'm also week. curious. Let's, let's get it started. Well, let's get, before we get what? started, let me just explain. Obviously, this is a little more difficult for people that are just listening oh. to follow along. So if you yeah. want to watch, please feel free to go on to Spotify YouTube and watch YouTube. at Flippin' Bats Pod. You can also watch on, on Spotify if you're just listening. Um, good luck. I will be <laughs> anxious and uh, you'll hear me talk through it, so that'll be just fine. But if you do want to watch, it'll obviously come out on social media. You can watch on YouTube, Spotify, all that good stuff. So. Okay. Let's get the first batter up and 30 seconds on the clock. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Set. Go. Okay. Um, okay. So what I see here, it's in Arizona Stadium. The Braves are in the other dugout. Um... Left-handed batter, little little bat waggle there, long two-handed follow. -through. Oh, that helps knowing the team. This shows you. Okay, the team I'm on either. He's on. Oh no. Okay, you got ten seconds. Let's go. Uh. Let's go. Five. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Michael Harris the second. Matt Olson. It's Matt Olson. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. I didn't. I, Dang you even it. had the team. I. You even had the team. Did that kind of mess you up or help you? No, that's that's part of it. I mean, right. come on, it's part yeah. of it. Okay. But I, I would, for 25 seconds of that countdown, I was sitting on Matt Olson. Why? What? We, switched, we learned this. Go with your gut. No, First because instinct. it. Look, I thought if we were going to use a, a swing and a silhouette of Matt Olson that it most likely would have been a homer and like a higher finish. It looked like a low line drive finish running out of the box. So I went Michael Harris the second. Okay. I don't regret my decision. Okay. Well, I do because well, I you, lost. You should because you're wrong. But I feel good about the, the context <laughs> the clues process that I got The process of how you got there. Well, let's get to our second player. Let's get 30 seconds on the clock and batter up. Let's go, Ben. All right. Uh... This is uh, Jose Ramirez. Yep. That was fast. Okay. Okay. Way to go with your gut. Yeah. One for one. One for two. Yeah. One and one is what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're one and one. One and one. Yeah. That yeah. one, I, I went with swing first. I saw Jose Ramirez, and then I turned around to look at my context clues, saw a Cleveland baseball fan in the background, then I really knew. That's okay. how, I, that's how okay. I got there. That's fair. So, okay. One more. All right. Let's get 30 seconds on the clock. And our third, batter up. Let's go. Right-handed hitter. Little hands up top. Okay. Little hands up here. Uh, little bat waggle. Uh, okay. Oh, no. Okay, so this is in Yankee Stadium. Red Sox in the away dugout. The home player is hitting, so it's a Yankee. Ten seconds. Right-handed. Higher leg kick. Is this is this Glaber Torres? It is. Yes. Woo. Good job. Okay. Not bad. That was tough. Not bad. You okay. you had like you knew all three, so you've you've actually had yeah. you've had like a good track record with this game. You should feel good about it. 
I'm disappointed I, I right, left, five, I left you've my gut. five out of six in your first two games. I left. That's good. I didn't trust my gut. I, I went told Michael you. Harris yeah. second. Should have gone Matt Olson, it's obviously. Okay. But I feel good about the last two. This is a fun game. Fun game. fun game. Fun game. Fun uh, game. Alex, I don't know if, if you saw it. Before what? we get going here, okay. you remember when we did our, um, our movie draft? Yeah. You did a top three. I did my top three. I got the but first overall did, You got the first pick, pick and then yeah, we yeah, alternated yeah. did a snake draft. Well, Bob Pockris, who is, uh, he works for NASCAR, Fox Sports NASCAR. Yeah, he's NASCAR reporter, okay. He apparently disagreed with us. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm scrolling yes. along social media. Okay, let's go. Let's scrolling hear it. along social media, and all of a sudden, I see Bob Pockris of Fox Sports NASCAR standing okay. on the stage, and he just goes in on us for our movie selection. So without get, diving too much into it, I'll just let you all listen to what Bob Pockris had to say about our movie draft. Hey everyone, this is Bob Pockers from Fox Sports NASCAR. I have a message for my friends over at Flippin' Bats, Ben Verlander and Alex Curry, because first off, I love the podcast. Can't wait to see who their top players are for 2024. But I have something for them, and that is you kids don't know the Bad News Bears. Because if you knew the Bad News Bears, they would have been in your top three of the best films of all time. Now let me tell you something, Walter Matthau, the coach of the team, his acting, Charlie Sheen in Major League couldn't hold Walter Matthau's jock strap. Brad Pitt in Moneyball, he couldn't hold Walter Matthau's oh. jock strap. Susan Sarandon in Bull Durham, she couldn't oh. hold, oh, not gonna go there. <laughs> Tate, now let me tell you about the best player in that <gasps> film, Tatum O'Neill, star girl pitcher. She could strike out all the boys. You know what, back in 1976, we didn't need Barbie to tell us about women empowerment and women's strength because we had Tatum f***ing O'Neal, okay? Oh, she dang. was the one who showed us what women could do. So you know what? You can have your angels in the outfield. I'm gonna take my not-so-angels in the outfield, the Bad News Bears, any day of the week. I love this so much. I love the fire. I love that, like, he just felt so passionate about it that he had to let us know in his NASCAR studio set. But. I Bob, I love the Bad News Bears. They are top five for sure for me. And I have such a personal connection to that movie because my college soccer team was called the Bad News Bears. No one believed we could ever do anything. No one believed we could win and we ended up winning a national championship. So I love the Bad News Bears and I love this passion. I love, thank you. That was beautiful. Listen here, that Bob. That was beautiful. Listen here, Bob. <laughs> Just because you were around in 1976 when this movie came out doesn't mean I was around in 1976. I don't even know who the hell Walter Matthau is, all right? No. Major League, Charlie Sheen, oh. Bull Durham. Sandlot. Sandlot, Moneyball. Give me those, all right? 1976, come on. I, I, sorry. I mean, I know the movie, yeah. but it ain't in my top three. Yeah. It ain't in my top three. And I'm not going to allow you to stand on the stage and get away with it. Good movie. Not top three. <laughs> That's all we got. I love, love it, you, though. Bob. That was I great. Love fashion. Thanks for no. listening and watching, to, that watching awesome. the show. That was awesome. I was great. dying laughing. Love. Bob, that was, that was hysterical. That was thank you for, for calling us out. And, and thank you for, uh, as you said, listening to the show and looking forward to the top five. Turns out number one was Ronald Acuna Jr., Fun episode. Lot to talk about. Good on the Orioles. Good for the Royals. Yeah. Good for baseball. Good things this week. Alex, we're getting closer and closer. Good for Mookie for pissing you off. By the Santa. time again, he didn't <laughs> piss me off. I'm by no means pissed. By no means. Um, by the time we are on uh, next week, <gasps> Super Bowl. No. Oh. The Dodgers and Padres pitchers and catchers will have reported to Kansas. This is a baseball show. But it's also sports. We just had NASCAR on there. I thought that was what you were talking about. That's but not, yeah, but, I forgot but that, yeah, because that is they're Sunday. starting so much earlier. Normally, it's after Super Bowl. Then it's like, pitchers, catchers, report. Yeah, but it's going to be already starting. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Fun show. Good stuff. Um, we will be back again. Uh, Off-season rolls on. Thank you all for listening. To this episode, make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple or Spotify. If you want to watch YouTube, Spotify as well, social media at Flippin' Bats Pod for everything. Check it all out. Thank you all for listening. Until next time, my friends, this has been Flippin' Bats. <laughs>